Today's session, we will discuss preparing for the Child Care Relief Fund 2022 for the state of Texas. Through today's session, you will learn what steps you can take now to put you in the best position to prepare to apply for the Child Care Relief Fund, which is coming in early 2022. So some things that we will cover is what do you need to get ready? How can you use the relief funds and how do you learn more? As you most likely have heard, the Child Care Relief Fund is coming back in 2022 and it will be larger than before. This is a separate round of funding available with $2.4 billion set aside just for eligible child care providers in the state of Texas. The Texas Child Care Business Coaching Team has worked with the Texas Workforce Commission to review all the cases in which providers were delayed in processing and receipt of funds and have compiled a list of action items that you can take now to help you prepare in advance to minimize the risk of funding delays and to plan for effective and full use of your funds. Eligible providers can expect to be invited to apply for the 2022 Child Care Relief Fund in early 2022. To be eligible, providers must be open to provide child care services at the time of application or be temporarily closed due to public health, financial hardship, or other COVID-19 related reasons. Providers must be licensed or registered in the state of Texas with child care regulation. And providers must be in good standing with HHSC, so not on corrective or adverse action. So getting ready um, just involves what we're calling three steps. In step one, you'll verify your information with child care regulation. In step two, you pull together key company or organizational data. And step three, you'll start to think about your game plan for utilizing the funds. And we'll go through these in a bit more detail. Step one, verify your information with child care regulation. The licensing data in the child care regulation system is used to populate the data in TWC's child care relief fund system, but they are separate systems. As a licensed child care or registered child care program in the state of Texas, information about your child care program is kept in a system managed by child care regulation. The licensing data in, in the child care regulation system is used again to populate the data in TWC's child care relief fund system, but it is a separate system. So what this means is if your information is not correct in the child care regulation system, it won't be correct in the relief fund system either. The relief fund system relies upon the child care regulation system data. Incorrect or out of date information in the child care regulation system can cause significant delays in receiving your child care relief funding. For example, a typo in your business name can prevent you from depositing your check when it's received. An out of date mailing address can result in a lost check when it's sent. Any, inform any incorrect information and the licensing system can prevent you from validating your application with CCRF and even being able to submit your application without technical support. So for this reason, it is extremely important that your information is up to date and correctly entered into the child care regulation system. As a fraud prevention measure, all changes must first be made in the child care regulation system before they can be made into the child care relief fund system. 
any changes made after the launch of the 2022 round of funding may need to be made manually, which can result in delays as well. Therefore, we highly recommend that you look at your information with childcare regulation now to ensure that you minimize the risk of any delays in applying or receiving your funds. From our review, from our review of cases from the 2021 round of funding, here are some critical pieces of information that you will want to double check. So that would be your program's name. Look in the child care regulation system and ensure that the name listed for your program is spelled correctly, as this will generally be the name on your check when you receive your relief fund check. So additionally, make sure that you have a bank account where you can deposit any checks made out to this name. In some cases, you may wish to add a doing business as a DBA name to your bank account. If the name is not listed correctly in the system, connect with your licensing representative for assistance. Controlling person information. The application for the Child Care Relief Fund must be completed by a controlling person who is authorized to assume fiscal and legal responsibility of managing funds for your business. Start thinking about who you want to have complete the application and make sure that they are listed correctly with child care regulation as this information is used to validate your application before it can be submitted. You, you can update this information manually in the child care regulation system. So in just you know, looking at things like the accuracy of spelling, if the name includes any hyphens or special characters, you may want to consider um, reviewing how your name is listed and spelled in the child care regulation system. Um, also, uh, for married persons, if your maiden name has changed, um, you want to also review that for accuracy, just to ensure that your name is up to date in the child care regulation system. The address. It's important to make sure that your location's address is correct, as certain zip codes may receive extra funding if they're located in a child care desert. But it's critical that you ensure that your mailing address is correct as well. Your mailing address is where TWC will send your check. You can update this information manually as well in the child care regulation system and your email address. The secure email address on file with child care regulation for your child care program is where all relief fund communications will be sent. Not only will this include all updates and general information emails from TWC, but it will include any contact about issues with your CCRF application as well. Do note that if you wish to have the relief fund communications received at a specific email address, which is different than the one that's listed, you must change the email address first on file with child care regulation. Um, so that email address is very important. Whatever email address you have listed with CCR is where your child care relief fund invitation and all other subsequent email updates will be sent. If you know that you will have upcoming changes to your licensing information after the second round of funding is underway, be prepared. As the systems are separate, you may need to take the following steps for changing, for making changes after the relief fund has begun. So first you will update your information with child care regulation and review what's listed and edit the inaccurate information. Next, you will notify the child care relief fund technical assistance team of the change. This will initiate this information being changed in the relief fund system. Contact information for the 2022 child care relief fund technical assistance team will be made available in early 2022. 
And third, you'll need to be prepared to verify the change through screenshots or other methods. This will serve as proof when notifying Relief Fund of the changes. Um, so again, we are encouraging everyone to review now before the second round is launched. That way, um, you will not have to go through these steps. You'll be able to just go into CCR and update your information. However, if you do notice, some changes need to be made once the 2022 uh, round of funding is underway. You will need to follow these three additional steps here. So step two, you'll pull together key company data. As part of the application process, TWC will review key information about your organization to ensure that your child care program is set up appropriately in the system to receive payments from TWC. You will want to verify that the data is listed correctly to uh, prevent any further delays in this process. To be sure that you're ready to apply, gather the following pieces of information about your child care program. Your operation ID, which is the license number for your child care program that's listed with child care regulation. You can find this on the copy of your child care program license, as well as in the public database of child care providers. Next, verify the ownership type for your program. The ownership type selected will affect the subsequent information that you're required to enter about your child care program. If you're unsure of which ownership type to select, you can take a look at the, um, the, the, the legend that will be included on the application, which gives a description of each type. Um, so we have some listed here, but I'll read out the full list for you. Sole ownership which is a person with exclusive title or rights to a business. This is a common choice for businesses with an owner and no employees. A partnership, that's a legal relationship that exists between two or more persons with other legal entities contractually associated as joint principles in a business. Texas Limited Partnership, that's a partnership formed by two or more persons and having one or more general partners and one or more limited partners registered with the Texas Secretary of State. Texas Corporation, which is um, one of the most common business types in addition to sole proprietorship. That's a corporation registered with the Texas Secretary of State, either for-profit or nonprofit. A professional association that is an entity registered with the Texas Secretary of State as a professional association. A professional corporation is a corporation registered with the Texas Secretary of State as a professional corporation. Out of state corporation is a corporation legal, legally chartered by a governmental entity outside the state of Texas governmental entity is any legal government agency not created by the Texas legislator, such as a city, county, or federal agency. Individual recipient, which is rare. This is an individual who provides goods or services to a Texas state agency or institution of higher education who is not a sole proprietor. And then other, this is an organization not defined within one of the other ownership types, such as an estate or informal organization not chartered by the Texas Secretary of State. You will need, and then your federal ID number you will need a valid federal employer ID number, which is known as an EIN, or a social security number, or in rare cases, an individual taxpayer identification number, also known as an I-10, for your application to be processed. This will be the number 
that you use to file your federal tax returns. So whatever you're used to file the federal tax returns for your organization is the tax ID number you will use when entering your CCRF application. And you, you will need your charter number or your Texas file number. When an entity is organized or registered with the state of Texas, they will receive an assigned number called a charter number or a Texas file number. If you do not know your charter or file number, you can call the Secretary of State at 512-463-5555. Step three, start thinking about a game plan for utilizing your funds. However, before doing so, please remember that the licensing data in the child care regulation system is used to populate the data in TWC's child care relief fund system, but it is a separate system. Generally, Allowable expenses are those that are necessary to reopen or maintain operations, and they include your rent or mortgage, including insurance, utilities, payroll, personal protective equipment, and cleaning supplies if you have proper documentation of these expenditures. It is important to know that you cannot claim expenses paid for by the Paycheck Protection Program, Employee Retention Tax Credit, Families First Coronavirus Response Act, Emergency or Family Leave, or any other stimulus and relief funding program. Remember, the funds function like a reimbursement for expenses that were already incurred, so you will want to keep that in mind while you plan. You may be wondering, what are the 2022 Child Care Relief Fund award amounts and how it's calculated? Your base funding amount is calculated using your license capacity and the 75th percentile of the average local market rate for child care in your locations area. Additional percentages will be awarded to child care programs with the greatest need for child care as well as those that are nationally accredited. To get an idea of how much funding you can expect to receive, you can view um, the table, which is included in the written guide for preparing for CCRF 2022. That's available at childcare.texas.gov. Um, and those will include um, estimated funding amounts by program type and location. Um, but the key thing to understand and know is that the estimated funding amounts nearly double what they were in the 2021 round of funding. So now that you have an idea of what your expected award amount is, look at your business and identify any areas where you think you might need funding the most. Funds can be used in a variety of ways. Some examples include purchasing much needed supplies for your program or making minor repairs to your facility. As funds can only be used for certain allowable expenses, you may wish to consider using your funds toward regular operating expenses such as rent or utilities to free up extra money that you would have used on those other expenses uh, that you may not be able to cover by the relief fund. Um, so there are more um, ideas and strategies on how providers can effectively use the relief funds. And there is a guide, a resource guide available as well at childcare.texas.gov um, that goes into a bit more detail on all the ways that you could think about using this investment for your program. Payroll costs are eligible for coverage under the Child Care Relief Fund as well. And make sure that you're ready to use the funds to cover your W-2 employees by reviewing your current payroll setup. And you can learn more about 
paying your employees in terms of incentives or bonuses or even temporary pay increases. And you can also learn about paying yourself if you are a sole proprietor. These are also two resource guides available at childcare.texas.gov. Those are called rewarding your staff with temporary pay, increases in bonuses, and paying yourself. With the current market for quality childcare, with the current market for quality childcare employees being so competitive, funds can also be used to give your childcare program an edge when it comes to attracting the best talent to your organization. That is also available at childcare.texas.gov. So detailed strategies to help childcare providers not only um, utilize the funds, but utilize them in a way that will put you in the best position um, operationally to continue to carry on your, your child care business. And we know an integral part of that is your staffing. So uh, that guide does go into detailed strategies around supporting your staff to aid in recruitment and retention. And there there will be help available. TWC has contracted an expanded technical assistance team that is currently gearing up for the 2022 round of funding. Contact information for the team will be available in early 2022. You can learn more at <coughs> childcare.texas.gov as more information is released. But in the meantime, please email texas at ECE Biz Coach with any questions that you may have. All the best.